Hey gang, it's Rob uh, with Japan Anime Games. Today we're going to be learning how to play Sword Art Online, Sword of Fellows. Uh, Sword Art Online is playable by up to four players. Uh, today we're just going to play with one, me, all by myself, all by my lonesome. Um, and if you play with one player, you have to pick two characters. One character in the game must always be Kirito, which you can see up here on the screen. And my character that I'm going to play alongside Kirito is Asuna. The goal of the game is to battle through the lower section, middle section, upper section, and then to the final battle. And we're going to cover everything in between, and that way you'll be ready and set to play Sword Art Online, Sword of Fellows, the board game. Uh, so to begin with, we're going to look at Kirito. If you see up there on the screen, uh, Kirito begins the game, as does every hero, at level 30. You can see at level 30 he has 10 HP. He has ability 1, 1, 1. And as you can see there are little pips 2, 3, and 4. That means that at level 30 he can use his ability once per turn regardless of the number of players. And if you look at further levels that changes. So just keep that in mind. Uh, beneath that you can see his abilities. We only need to worry about the bottom 3 abilities since he's only level 30. And if we take a look at the back of Kirito's card, we can see that he has a sword skill icon. That's those X's there. They trigger if you have that many dice with the same result. So essentially every character has a specific mechanic related to how they use the dice. So essentially Kirito wants to get dice of the same type. Um, a character like Asuna wants to get dice in a certain order, basically ascending one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. So let's begin the game. We're going to start with Kirito as our main, Asuna as our support. I am going to go into the lower section. It's my only choice. Uh, there actually are no choices when it comes to ascending through the map. And so we enter the lower section. And we reveal Disaster in the Trap Room. The monster card or the, the trap card, whatever you want to call it, reveals everything we need to know about this scenario. So, Disaster in the Trap Room. It says three main, three support. In addition, it says Monster Trap, HP 30, two damage. In addition, it also has two special rules. AoE and Reroll minus one. AoE means that it not only does damage to the main, like a normal monster would, it also will deal damage to the support. Reroll minus one means you roll, you get one less reroll per turn. Essentially every turn you get two rerolls per character. Now we would only get one. So let's begin. It says three main, so that means the main gets three dice. And it says three support, so that means the support gets three dice. We're going to begin, obviously, with our main Kirito. And like I said, he wants to roll same dice. So I would roll my three dice. And right here I got a three, a three, and a three. Pretty much couldn't ask for anything better for Kirito. Um, and so essentially what we do, if you take a look at his card, vertical arc costs three, uh, or costs two X's, and... Um, so we could spend it to get there, but let's see what Asuna does. Let's see if Asuna can help out. I'm sure she can. So I roll my dice. I got a one, two, and a four. So far, none of those are a three, so it doesn't really help me out there. So I'm going to re-roll. Like I said, I get two re-rolls per turn, although only one since I'm in the trap room. Um, I roll a six, a two, and a five. Two and the five are useless to me. The six is good. Um, and basically what that allows me to do is, well actually, let's take a look at something here, guys. Asuna, flip up to two standard dice to their opposite side. Five and a two. I'm going to flip this five to a two. So I use Asuna's ability. She's done with using abilities for this scenario. So that means I can vertical arc, vertical arc, and rage spike. Meaning I'll deal one damage, four damage, four damage. So that's eight, nine damage, and uh, I have one dice left over. 
That means I deal 9 damage to the disaster in the trap room. Use a little marker to represent that damage. And the disaster in the trap room inflicts its damage back onto me. We would now change turns. Asuna would become the main. Kirito would become the support. And now it would be Asuna's turn to battle here. Once again, it's three main, three support. So Asuna rolls three dice. Remember, Asuna, though, wants to get ascending order dice. So like a four and a six is nice. And let's see what Kirito rolls for this. A five is good. So because we have four, five, six. So then we can re-roll all of these pretty much. And one, two, two. Okay, so we can, if you take a look at the card, use Tri Thrust with the four, five, and six, and Linear with the one. So that would mean we would deal one damage and three damage, dealing a total of four damage to the Trapper. But let's talk about something interesting real quick. Let's imagine, let's imagine right now that I had rolled really well and this was two and three. So that instead of using Tri Thrust, we could have used Starry Tear. Starry Tear means that um, I would use five dice here in ascending order, and then the one die for linear. Or let's say, oh no, I would have to do it like this. One, two for linear, and four dice for quadruple pain. What I'm trying to say is I've used all my dice. I utilize everything with Asuna to battle my opponent. This means I've gotten a perfect turn and I can switch. Essentially it's like I used my combos so well that the opponent doesn't even get a chance to counterattack. I would immediately go back to Kirito's turn as the main, skipping the disaster in the trap room's opportunity to attack me back. Doing this as often as you can is really important in this game since it's all about a game of attrition. You don't want to reach the upper section in the final battle with low health and the only way you're going to do that is by trying to get as many switches as you can. Um, sometimes this means maybe even taking lower damage outputs in a single turn just to get a switch. So I switch back to Kirito and let's imagine I defeat the trap room. When you defeat the trap room it's destroyed. Each character levels up keeping the same damage, but their maximum health increases. So in this kind of game, you want to track damage rather than maximum health, because even though these guys both have two damage on them from fighting the trap room, they're now at 12 total health and 15 total health. So with the two damage applied, it's 13 and 10. We would move on to the middle section. We would acquire an item this would technically go to the main, but the main could then assign it to whoever they want. So let's just give the Dark Repulsor equipment card to Kirito. So Kirito with the Dark Repulsor card would increase all damage dealt by one. Each instance of damage would increase by one on Kirito. So a great little card for him. Uh, and if it had instead been a green card, a consumable, so let's say the Holy Soul Returner Crystal, this more acts like as a one-time use potion, whereas this remains in play. We would then move on to the middle section, having gained our level, unlocked new abilities, and gained our character die. If you can see up there on the screen, there are character die. I don't actually have them here because I'm playing with production samples. These are just printed out cards. The, the final sets will look much different. Um, and we would move on to the middle section. The middle section is interesting. The quest for the rare materials. What's interesting about it is, is if you notice on the left-hand side is that there are multiple tiers or steps these steps are each different monsters that you have to fight in order. So step one, step two, and step three. Each time you still have four main and three support, plus your character die, um, as well as um, having to battle each one. Your, your abilities do not refresh between each step, and so that kind of creates a lot of tension with 
how are you going to defeat these monsters and how important is it for you to get switches early on as opposed to later i mean do you really want to use abilities to get a switch against the three damage attack or do you want to wait until it's a five damage attack kind of strategy that you need to think about um and once you defeat the middle section having beaten each step in succession you'll unlock the support card of yui draw a new item card gain a new level and move on to the upper section after the upper section is completed you do not gain any more levels but you do gain another item and you move on to the final battle. At the end of the final battle, you win the game. Uh, games take about 20 to 30 minutes and you can modulate the difficulty however you want uh, by playing in certain ways that are included in the rule book. Um, this game will be out this summer. Uh, if you have any questions about it or, um, or about any of our other games, just let me know. Either send me an email at info at japanimegames.com or by leaving a comment on this YouTube uh, video. Uh, thanks guys, I really appreciate it. I hope uh, you know this was informative for you and uh, if you have anything you wanna add, just let me know. All right guys, have a good one, see ya.